you may find yourself with several images from one shoot that you want to process the same way. Well, Aurora HDR makes this very easy. In fact, you can even change the number of brackets you're using and it will auto detect which shots go together. Let me show you the batch processing window. Now, you might notice that batch processing is grayed out if you don't have an image currently open. So one way to access it is to quit the program and launch it, or be sure to choose it with an image already open. I'm just gonna relaunch here. And you'll see in the opening dialog, batch processing. Now, you have to step through and tell it where to look. You can drag images or folders here for batch processing, including an entire memory card, or just click Browse. Navigate to a series of images. I'm gonna to go to this folder called Bracketed Series and open it up. And I'll choose Open. It now scans that folder and locates the different images. In this case, it was pretty simple. Three sets of photos with three photos each but it's pretty smart. If I browse another folder, in fact, let's just do the entire lesson folder here, what you'll notice is it starts to scan and it will locate everything and figure it out. Now, chances are you're not going to process all of these images at once, but you do have the ability to load up several photos at once or choose if you want to process things as a bracket or single images. Let's close this for a moment and just do that last window I'll choose Browse and open up the folder and it located everything. I'm gonna to choose to treat this as a bracket series and when ready, click Continue. Now it's pretty simple. You can decide what you want to create. JPEGs for posting online or emails. Or you can use the last settings you've made. Additionally, you can go here and decide what you want to apply. So I can choose to go into any folder, including third-party downloadable presets or my user presets. I can now choose any particular preset that I've created or one that I have installed, as well as adjust the strength of that preset. I need to tell it where to write the files. So what I'm gonna do is make a new folder on my desktop called Output and click Open. Now, I decide what should happen here. For example, maybe I want the file name followed by a counter or a suffix or letters at the end. You can decide how to build out custom file names. In this case, I'm gonna go with the prefix and say that I wanna go with a custom name called Lincoln underscore, then the base as a counter, and I see the new file name take shape. I can also choose the format, writing out JPEGs, PNGs, or TIFFs, as well as Photoshop documents. Let's go with JPEG. Assign a color profile, such as Adobe RGB, and a basic size. I'm gonna stick with the original here, and when I'm ready, I can either choose to process this or do a few other options. If this is a setting you use often, you can click Save Settings and it's added. I can call this black and white, high quality JPEG. And that's added to my user settings. Under Advanced, I can decide whether or not to do other options like sharpening, denoise, and if the images need alignment or ghost reduction. In this case, I'm gonna choose to make sure they're aligned because I was shooting at night. When I click Done, everything is queued up. And when ready, just click the Process button. What you'll see now is it will analyze each set of images, perform the alignment, then apply the preset, and go on to the next. This will take some time, particularly on a large folder full of images. But what's useful here is you can queue up several things. Ideally, what you'll do is take the time to process one of the images and figure out exactly which settings you want. Then I suggest creating a user preset and storing that. Then the batch command's pretty easy. You can now run this on several photos from the shoot and quickly generate the results that you're hoping for. You'll see here in this case, it's already gone on to the next image. And shortly after it's done this processing, it'll go on to the one after that. Now I can either return to Aurora HDR to keep working or reveal the results. 
You'll see here in this case, all three images were exported.